Boy, have we got something special for you today. This is the San Lorenzo 500 EXP Arrow. She's a 47 meter explorer yacht, steel hull, aluminium superstructure, and she is a proper toy box. And we're not talking the normal stuff like your Williams jet tenders and your jet skis and your flight boards. No, we're talking an Airbus helicopter and a U-boat work submarine. If you wanna go places, explore the world, this is the boat to do it on, and we have got an all access pass. So let's get going. I'm Jack Haynes, you're watching Yacht Buyer. Before we get into it though, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit subscribe, hit the bell icon, and you'll never miss another tour like this one. Arrow is currently on the market with HMY yachts for just under $35 million. We'll put a link to the listing in the description below and the pinned comment, so go and check it out. Now then, on with the tour. My word, have we got a lot to show you on this thing, but we're gonna start down here at the beach club, and this is where the toys begin. We've got the Sea Bob mounted down here, and then you can see you've got a couple of scooters, a couple of dirt bikes, how do they launch these? Well, this boat doesn't have its tender on board. It generally tows it. It's a customized iguana amphibious tender. It's got a crane on board, and then they can crane these bikes onto the tender. It runs up the beach and cranes them off again. It's a really slick, cool operation. You may well have spotted the helicopter as well. They can even tow these things on the long line from the helicopter and drop them on and off land. The possibilities really are pretty amazing with Arrow. If we carry on through into the beach club before we head upstairs, I just want to show you the gym in here. It's a really cool space. It's very flexible. You have the gym equipment in here, but you can also have a massage table in here so you can run this as a sort of spa because you've got showers and toilet behind me. It's also got a fold down balcony on this side. So this entire section, you can see the cleats up here. This entire section drops down. You can put an exercise bike on there so you can do some cycling you know with a lovely view outside the yacht it's a really flexible space we'll head back out now though and go up to the main deck come on then i know this is the bit that you really want to see this is the real toy chest the part of arrow that really sets it apart because we have here on the heli deck space for an airbus h130 it's got space for six passengers it's uh you know, sort of sightseeing helicopter. You can see the big glass area, so you've got amazing views out of it. It's got a five, 600 kilometer range. They don't actually store any fuel on board for this, so it refuels at airports and then comes and joins the yacht wherever it is. And they don't have a permanent pilot on board. The pilot just comes on board as and when the owner thinks he might want his services. So this is for exploring the sky once you've got to your destination. And then this is for exploring underwater. This is a U Boatworks Nemo. It's got a diving depth of 100 meters, space for two people. Really, really awesome bit of kit. And this launches via a crane. There's a knuckle crane stowed in the deck down there, underneath the heli deck, connects to the top of the sub, and it can just drop it in. And the other thing to point out, I mentioned the iguana tender. If they want to carry that on board, they can. They move the helicopter over to one side, and the iguana, using the same crane, is just dropped down on this aft deck. So this is helipad, working deck, but also party deck. We'll get onto that later on. For now though, I think we should stay on the main deck and head inside to the main saloon. Into the main saloon then, and this is a sort of formal living area on the inside. You have the dining table set up here, you have a nice amount of seating here amidships. It's all natural teak that's been treated, it's very sort of muted tones, which is exactly what the owner wanted. Lots of comfortable seating space, and okay, the view is blocked off because you've got all the toys out there, the sub and the helicopter, but you have got almost floor to ceiling windows on both sides. So there's plenty of natural light in, lots and lots of good views out, and you have sliding doors on either side, either side of the dining room. So again, natural ventilation, but also good extra access in and out of this area. And you can see it's a place for guests to congregate. You've got the benches down either side that take in the views down here. That works really, really well. And then if we head forward, we find the owner's stateroom. There's another door here out to the starboard side deck and a staircase up onto the foredeck. Crew access that side with a day head here, but let's get to the main event in this part of the boat, which is the owner's stateroom. I'm gonna start in the study. This is not just some little bureau where you've got a desk. This is a proper private study, it can be closed off from the rest of the cabin. Look at the size of it. Lovely amount of space in here and so nicely fitted out. It's a gorgeous space. 
and it's got a nice big window in here so you've got great views while you're tapping away on the keyboard great place to work from they've got Starlink of course so there's no issues with internet access on a yacht like this but heading right forward we find the sleeping area there's a walk-in wardrobe here on the starboard side and then wow what a space. I'm already feeling the breeze from the balcony that we've got open on the starboard side there, much like the spa. It's got a balcony that pops down and it's got railings that pop out of it as well. It's all in one motion, really easy for the owner to operate. So they wanna come down here, or in the morning get up, get out there, put the chairs out there and have a morning coffee, glass of champagne with an amazing view. You're in the Arctic, icebergs in the background, you really can picture it. What a special place to do that. And the rest of the cabin isn't bad either. Huge amount of space in here, lovely big double bed. Mirror TVs all over the place. The owner didn't want to see TVs, so you see most of the TVs are hidden behind a mirror. And then a huge ensuite that stretches across the beam of the boat. His and hers with a shower in the middle. It's another really lovely space. From here, I think we should head downstairs and see what accommodation the guests get on board. Access to the lower deck is via the central atrium area, up to the bridge deck and down here to the guest cabins. Down here on the lower deck, there are four guest cabins, two twins, two doubles, they're identical. First, you get to the twin cabin. We'll go here into the port side one just to give you a size of the space. And actually, it's a really good space. Two nice size single beds, plenty of space in between them. There's actually Pullman berths in the twin cabin. So you have another berth that drops down from here so you can sleep three people in here. And they've actually got inflatable infills that go between with a mattress on top for the kids. So they can have a massive triple bed have sleepovers in here, have lots of fun, and they have their own bathroom as well. Every guest cabin has its own very nicely done private bathroom. And much like the stateroom, we have TVs embedded within the mirrors. You do not see TVs in this boat at all, really, apart from on the bridge deck. If we head further amidships, we arrive at the VIP staterooms. Again, they're identical, double cabins. We'll duck into this one. And yeah, this is a lovely space. You can arrange the beds different ways. If you don't want it running this way, you can have it running across this way. But I think this works very, very nicely. Big amount of hang storage over here for these cabins. Again, they've got a bureau, but that also combines the mirrored TV. So that works very, very nicely. Big portholes as well. They're vertical, but they're big. So lots of natural light should be able to get in when you're not next to another boat. And you've probably spotted the iPad down there. You have full control of climate control, AV, lighting, all of that stuff in each cabin from an iPad totally bespoke. And then again, another lovely ensuite bathroom. These have got separate shower cubicle and toilet and a pocket door so you can get some privacy. From here on the lower deck then, I think we should head up and check out the bridge deck. Up the bridge deck then, through this door we have the bridge and the captain's cabin, we'll look at that in a moment. Day head up here as well and then this upper lounge. This is smaller, cosier than downstairs, somewhere where the owner might want some privacy, relax with family, watch the TV, one of the few TVs you can actually see on this yacht. And then you have the bar here as well, so you can pour yourself a drink and enjoy the wonderful views from these floor to ceiling windows. We are pre-elevated in this spot, so the views out when you're clear of a marina should be absolutely fantastic. And then you walk through these automatic doors and you're out onto bridge deck aft. And this is a, you know outdoor living space that's a bit smaller, a bit more compact, but feels very private. You've got a wet bar up here so you can serve the table and the seating space here. But you know, this is an area that's very flexible. San Lorenzo, whatever you want probably up here goes in terms of furniture and layout. To the extent that most of the time these boats don't have this cut out here, but obviously this boat's got the submarine, so they need the space. So they cut out this entire section, leaving these platforms here either side. We'll get onto that when we come onto party mode on the sun deck. Heading forward, symmetrical access all the way around this wheelhouse section up towards the foredeck. And there's access points in and out of this deck from inside. Staircases up to the sun deck. We're gonna go up there in a moment. The bridge is here with access both sides. And then you have wing stations on either side as well. So when you're doing slow speed control, you have throttle controls, thruster controls inside here on either side. So you're nice and close to where you're mooring to. Portuguese bridge. And that leads us to yet more toys. There's toys absolutely everywhere on Arrow. We've got a pair of 300 horsepower jet skis here. 
and then the Williams 345 Sport Jet Tender. This is a great tender for the owner to use, go for a blast. Very easy to get in and out of the water for the crew. You can see there's a crane over here and that's used to lift all of this stuff in and out of the water. I think one of the best aspects of the 500 EXB is yes, you can explore on it, go to far-flung spaces, but it's so comfortable as well. You've got amazing leisure spaces on board this boat, especially on the sun deck where we have the hot tub. This has got two heaters, so it can reliably stay at 40 degrees. And then after that, you've got a great mix of just places to relax under this enormous aluminium hardtop bar area over there with cooling, fridge, grill, all that good stuff. And then you've got a dining space up here as well, as you can see, nice dining table back here. And then sunbathing space aft with the sun loungers. And you've got a canopy that you can take up and down depending on how much sun you want. And I talked about the party zone. You see these two blocks loitering under covers here? That's about 40 grand's worth of subwoofer. They set those up, they set up speakers, they can set up a DJ booth here either looking towards the sun deck or even better, looking out aft over a clear helicopter deck where you can have a proper dance floor, lights and everything. Proper party boat status on board Arrow. Let's head downstairs and look at the technical spaces. We're moving forward towards the bridge from inside the bridge deck now. There's a dumbwaiter on the starboard side. You've also got the captain's cabin on the starboard side, nice and close to the bridge. There's access out onto the port side deck through a crew door here and a crew staircase separate to the guest staircase all the way down to the crew accommodation on the lower deck. And moving into the bridge itself, there's a pocket door here, so you can slide that across and have some privacy. And this is where the captain's gonna be spending a lot of time on this thing, because it is designed to go places. 4,000 nautical mile range at 10 knots. It really can cover some serious ground, this, and it feels typically purposeful up here. It's a very professional looking environment. You've got your array of screens here. Fantastic view through these upright windscreens where you can see the toy deck, steering wheel throttles, and of course your controls for your thrusters as well. You can control the boat at slow speeds from here, but really you're gonna be wanting to do that from out on the wing stations. And I think this is an important part. Crew may wanna sit here, keep the skipper company, but so may guests, the owner, come when you're on passage, sit up here, enjoy the view, enjoy the ride. It's a really nice elevated space to enjoy the passage. There's also a desk down here so the skipper first officer can keep up on paperwork and they've got a comfortable space to do it. From here, I think we should head right down to the lower deck and check out the crew and technical spaces. We're accessing the crew mess from the lower deck. That is the guest companion way on the lower deck there. There's a door straight into the crew area here. Obviously that works very well for the crew so they can serve the guests very easily. This is their mess area, somewhere they can have some private downtime, but they've got cameras set up so they can see all areas of the boat really easily. They've also got control panels so they can see the systems from down here. This is the crew galley, sort of the communal galley. There's a professional galley in there where the chef is in at the moment cooking something up that smells absolutely delicious. So we won't disturb him, but it is very nice in there. We'll get a few cutaways for you. And if we head aft, you have stairway access to the deck above. This is all crew cabins here, bunks in here. We won't go in there because the crew are in there. We don't want to pry into their private space, but where we can go is down a deck to the tank deck. We're quite a long way forward underneath the crew space here on the tank deck and we're just going to work all the way aft and culminate in the engine room. This is all cooling space in this section, all separated by watertight doors. But you know, this is a boat where owners and guests may want to live on board for very long periods of time. It could be very remote, so they need lots and lots of cold storage. And they've certainly got it. This is the laundry space down here. You can see all the washers and dryers are whirring away down here some space for the crew to do folding, things like that. They've got a sink down here. This is the heart of the boat when it comes to keeping the linens and all the clothes clean. And then we go through this door and we find the water maker and the boilers and all the stuff required for the heating of water, treating of water on this boat. You've got two water makers here. They both produce about 300 litres an hour, so 600 litres an hour in total, all of that is confined to this space here. And then through this big watertight door here, we have the engine space itself.
This is the beating heart of Arrow. Without all this stuff, she wouldn't be able to go to those far flung places that she's designed to go to. Engine wise, we have a pair of Caterpillar 2300 horsepower engines. She is not about speed. She's full displacement steel hull. Top speed is about 14 knots, but as I said, it's that 10 knot cruising speed, 60,000 litres of fuel capacity and a 4,000 nautical mile range that is so important. You've got all the sort of stuff you'd expect on a boat of this style. So you've got fuel transfer, you've got multi-stage filtering so that you can keep the fuel running even if filters get blocked. It's really high-end stuff that has redundancy because you don't know where you're going to end up. So the engineers who spend their lives up in that booth up there have got to be able to fix this thing on the move. If we head through that door and through the control room, we're back to the beach club. Thanks very much for watching that tour of Arrow. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give the video a like. If you really enjoy your super yacht content, we've got a tour of the 90 meter Lurson Phoenix 2 up here. If you click up there, you can watch that. Click up here, you can subscribe. Thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm Jack Haynes. This is Yacht Buyer.